the opening to the Batman film with Heath Ledger, who plays Joker, can help any dude or dudette prepare for a federal sentencing hearing. For purposes of this video, let's presume the Joker is the prosecutor. As you might recall in that awesome opening scene, they're robbing a bank. One guy's on the top of the roof, he completes his task, and he gets shot. The person who shoots him completes his task, he gets shot too. And it's obvious all of these guys think they're different. Even though everyone else is getting shot and going down, they figure they will be the one left standing. Well, we're going to talk about how that relates to some people traversing a white collar crime investigation. Before I do, welcome. Welcome to our channel. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you find value. So grateful to have you here. This discussion of the Batman film transitioned to a, into a call I received a few weeks ago from a defendant in Los Angeles, my hometown, not far from Encino, where I grew up. He's in the west end of the valley. He called to tell me that he had been indicted for a payroll protection fraud loan. But before he told me that, it was a very interesting phone call. He called and he's like, Justin, I like your videos, but you don't get it. And I was like, but you don't get it. He's like, you don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get it. And I'm arguing like my five-year-old son for 20 minutes telling him you don't get it. And he said the same thing back to me. And finally, I'm like, what don't I get? Help me understand what's going on here. What are we doing here? And then he said, I'm under indictment for a payroll PPP loan investigation. I've been watching your videos. I think a lot of the advice you offer is very helpful. I just think for myriad reasons, it's not really applicable to me. And I said, okay, can I ask you some questions? And I can already tell he was looking to kind of brush me off the phone and just thank me for these videos. And he did not want to have a discussion and I'm busy and I didn't want to probe any more than was necessary, but I did want to kind of establish where he was and the, the, the thought process that compelled him to think that he would be different, just like the guy on the roof who shoots someone thinking he's not going to be taken out next. Why are you different? So I was able to get from him some information, namely that because he was running an actual business, he presumed in the eyes of the government he's going to be treated uh, differently. Indeed, there are people who have gotten PPP loans, fraudulent, fraudulent numbers, made up employees, get a loan, and they spend it on jewelry and cars and travel and they blow it. There was no there was no business. They literally just stole the money, and our team has worked with some of those people as well. Then there are those on the PPP side who had legitimate businesses. This executive or defendant was in California, faced pressure when the governor, governor Newsom shut down the state, felt as if no revenues would ever come in, frantically starts applying for a bunch of loans, and in so doing, you know, makes up some of the numbers. All the money comes in, and he doesn't think to return it, or address it differently. He keeps the money, he spends it under the rationalization that if the state didn't shut me down, and if this pandemic didn't exist, I never would have had this opportunity and I need these resources to keep my business uh, growing. Those were, that is how he convinced himself. So on the call, I tried to get some information from him. What is success for you? And I know at times I ask that question and the answer is so obvious. I know what success is. It's initially, I just wanna get the shortest possible prison sentence. I understand that. And I confirmed from him that was the goal. Then I tried to reverse engineer some of his decisions seeing, since seeing his name versus the United States of America. And he got kind of agitated and angry. He didn't want to answer and address if he was working to build a, a, a new record within this business or making changes to ensure this could never happen again. He didn't want to discuss how he's working with his lawyer holding them accountable. And he didn't want to discuss the government's perspective of him. He didn't want to address it. So I asked him several times, how do you think the prosecutor views you? What is his perception of you? What does he know about you? What does he not know about you? Why do you think that you are different? And can I share something with you that then bothered him? He said, fine. I said, if anything, you are worse. I know where you live, you just told me. It's a beautiful home, an expensive home. You have resources, you have money. Next to the January 6th cases, I told him there is nothing catching the attention of the United States government, the US Attorney's Office more in PPP loan cases. It's no different after 9-11. There are people that engaged in fraud to get loans. They went down and many of them went to federal prison. The government, you leverage off a pandemic. You exploited this pandemic or you exploited a national tragedy of the Twin Towers coming down. They use it to advance their career. It looks good in the headlines. They love the DOJ press releases. So I said, you might think you're different. Let me articulate to you, you are worse. I've been to sentencing hearings recently where a judge will tell a defendant, you're educated, you had opportunity, you're privileged, you're entitled, you have a wonderful education. I'm going to hold that against you. My goodness, you're going to hold it against me that I might have been born into privilege or I worked my ass off to build a business with resources and I put myself through a good school working two or three jobs. You're going to hold it against me that I'm educated. That is correct. So I'm telling all of you the climate is changing in the white collar crime world with all cases, including PPP fraud, which prosecutors love. 
Prosecutors become defense attorneys. Look at their bio. Took down ABC 1,500 people for PPP fraud. It advances their career. As I shared this with him, it made him uncomfortable. And he said, okay, Justin, I'm going to get back to you. I said, get back to me whenever you like. I encourage you to begin to change the government's version of events, namely that you're a thief and a criminal who exploited this pandemic. He's like, no, no, that's not how I, that's not, that's not how I view myself. I know that's not how you view yourself. It's not how I view you. I'm trying to help you understand how the prosecutor or Joker views you. He is taking you. They are taking you down. They are taking you out. And you think you're going to be the dude left standing. You will not be. Pretty much hangs up the phone. Fine. I've been told I'm too direct. I could be a little softer. But when I was a defendant, I was leveraged off of. I was stolen. People gave me the buzzwords, the cliches, the platitudes, whatever I wanted to hear to pull out the money and get me the outcome on it. A lot of charlatans out there who will tell you exactly what you want. I'm not going to do. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be transparent and tell you. We're not going to ask you to do something we didn't do. And I'm going to remind you it takes a whole hell of a lot of work to change the government's version of events. And only you can do it. And you might think it's in my interest to say that because we'd love for you to schedule a call with our team, which I would love you to do because we can help you. I am relaying or channeling to you what federal judges have told us. Watch the videos. If you want the best outcome, watch the videos and then do the work. Judge Pearson told us, treat sentencing like a full-time job. Judge Boo told us on YouTube, he discounts what lawyers say because they're paid to say it. Judge Bulwer told me at a conference, the order of mitigation follows. Defendants, lawyers, friends, and family. He then said defendants get it all backwards. So you can take this knowledge and you can apply it or you can be like this person from Los Angeles who called to say, great videos, great stuff, doesn't apply to me. They think they're like the, the, the dude in the Joker movie or Batman movie, the one who's going to be left standing. The only one left standing at the end of that opening scene was the Joker, just like the prosecutor is going to be left standing. I don't know if that's the best analogy. I think you get it. You are not different in the eyes of the government. You are worse especially when we're dealing with the PPP fraud, which loans to a call that I, a call I got last week. Today's the 15th of December. He called me back on the 8th and he said, this is horrific. This is absolutely awful. I had my probation interview. The report came back. My guidelines were 37 to 41 months. She's recommending 41 months. She's recommending massive restitution. She's recommending a federal prison sentence. My lawyer told me worst case, maybe 18 months. I don't understand this. And then I asked him some questions. I asked permission. May I ask you some questions? He's like, oh, here we go. Can I ask you some questions? I'm in the problem solving business. I can't solve problems unless I have questions. How do you feel after our call a month ago? Well, it was eye opening for me. It was, it was very difficult to take, to learn and recognize the government might view me differently than I do. I don't think I'm a bad person. I don't think I'm a criminal. I think I'm a good husband and father, and it was just very sobering to hear that. But I think it's important that I do consider their perspective excellent. He's beginning to embrace the reality of the situation, which is crucial to this process. To the reality of the situation, I'm putting up about 15 or 20 book reports that talk a lot about the reality of the situation. I'll put a link to those book reports that should go in your release plan in this description. So he said, that was sobering for me. And then when I got this pre-sentence report back asking for a long federal prison sentence, it devastated me, and I finally am realizing there's more than I need to do because in this pre-sentence report, they're justifying a long federal prison sentence. I don't agree with all of the facts of the case. I think they're portraying me differently, and then I said, that is their job. They have an agenda. I then asked him, and I, know, I asked some of these questions, and I know the answer is going to be no. I already know, but I have to ask, and then I can ask follow-up questions. In advance of your meeting with the probation officer, did you turn in a narrative in your own words that doesn't excuse but explains your conduct, what you've learned, what you'll do moving forward, how you're going to use your existing business to continue to pay the money back, which could be a mitigating factor? Have you done that? He said, no, I didn't do that. Do you think you should do that? Why should I? I'll tell you. If this probation officer is going to recommend how long you should serve in prison, which apparently she just did, 41 months, would it have made sense to try to influence this person? Oh, my God, yes, I need to do that. Only I told him if it has the right messaging. Where he got confused is thinking because he wasn't someone who never had a business, someone who, there are people, as I said, as I've said before, who just gets the loan and spends the money on jewelry and cars and just blows it. No, no actual business. He presumed because he had a business and there was this pandemic and all of these pressures that somehow he would be treated differently because he employs people and he's on a path to pay the money back. And when he heard that, if anything, he it would be worse for him because of the crime and the perception of the stakeholders, it really shook him, but it, it is now compelling him to take a different course of action. So in Los Angeles earlier this week, we spent time together. We actually met at IHOP in Encino, not far from, from where I grew up. And it was wonderful to spend time with him. It was wonderful to see this transformation of, you know what, I'm not different. I don't know why I thought that I was different. 
I now see that I'm going to be treated like everyone else who gave in to this pandemic and pressure because, of course, there are so many people who faced pressures during the pandemic, who did not seize opportunity to get a loan that was fraudulent. And that's essentially what I told them you have to say. Your Honor, regardless of the pressures that I faced during the 2020 pandemic and the rationalizations I might have given into that led me to seize a criminal opportunity, I know there are tens, hundreds of millions of business owners who face that same pressure and who didn't cheat. I should be held to a higher standard. And now he's beginning to take words out of the judge's mouth. I am educated. I have run a business. I have known, I did know right from wrong. I have done this for more than 30 years. There is no excuse for me. That's better messaging. And it's messaging we are now going to get to the probation officer. Our team knows you shouldn't be going to prison. We want to, we're continuing to advocate to close minimum security camps. But it doesn't really matter what our team thinks. What matters is how you are influencing the jokers of the world, how you are influencing stakeholders who play a significant role in how long you'll go to federal prison and freedom you're going to have down the road. So as I wrap up this video, I will encourage you to do exactly what our new client did earlier this week. I want to change the narrative. I'm not different. I can't guarantee I told him what will happen at sentencing, but at least you'll have the dignity of knowing you did the work. And you have the dignity of knowing you tried to convey to all of these stakeholders why you're worthy of leniency and articulate a clear path and plan moving forward. And I will say that clear path and plan has to be realistic. Our team has spoken with judges who will say, I think you tell me what I want to hear. You plead guilty because you got caught. You give back the money to avoid federal prison. You cooperate, not because it's just, but because you want to avoid prison. If there isn't evidence behind the plan, it didn't exist. So as you create content strategically and write and produce and share it, it's got to be very strategic. It's got to be thoughtful. It has to articulate who you were, how you got here, and what this vision is moving forward. If you'd like our team to help with that, I'll put up a link to schedule a call. Or if you can do it on your own, do it, but it must start. You're already late. Let's get to work. Goodbye.